Let's look at question 50. What is the amount received when $500 in invested for two years at 6% per annum compound interest? Alright. Let's see. The interest in the first year is 6 per cent of 500. So what is that? 100 into 100, 100 into 500, 5, 6, 5, 30. Alright, you get $30 in the first year. What happens in the second year? First of all, if it was simple interest, you'd get another $30 in the second year. So the total interest would be $60. And the amount received, not the interest, no, the amount, they say, amount, not interest, amount is 60 plus 500 would be 560. But the thing is, it's not C because it's not simple interest, it's compound interest. And you know that compound interest increases faster than simple interest. So it would be a little more than 560. So the answer would be D, 561. So here, you say that question 50 is D. The answer to question 50, D, right? But anyway, let's just refresh our skills at calculating compound interest by doing the maths completely, even though we know the answer is D. In compound interest, you calculate the interest from the latest amount from the interest from the, the, the amount from the last time. With simple interest, you use the first money you deposit and calculate it. When you get the interest, they send it to another account or write you a check, but the money remains fixed. That's what happened in fixed deposit account. The fixed deposit account are simple interest. The savings account are it's a compound interest you can you you get the interest then the bank goes into the account and add the interest to the amount to get a new amount all right fixed deposit the amount is fixed it doesn't change the five hundred dollar doesn't change so they keep giving you the same thirty dollars every year but with compound interest you get the new interest based calculated from the latest amount of money you had so what the bank does in compound interest instead of writing your check what they do is add the thirty dollars to the five hundred in compound interest so you have five hundred and thirty dollars now 530 then for the second year you they find 6 per cent of 530 what you get is this uh, 206 3 210 5 you have 3 by 53 over 5 so that's 3 3 is 9 3 5 15 159 over 5 5 into 5, 1, 5 into 15, 3, 5 into 9 goes 1, and remainder 4, 1 and 4, 5, that's 31.8. So the money you have now would be in compound interest, if that's the case, the money you have now would have been the 530 when they added the $30 to the $500 in the first year. Plus, in the second year, you got $31.80, 31.8. When you add those, 
you have five hundred and sixty one dollars eighty all right so that's why you have five sixty one point eight zero um in the answer d let's move on let me erase the rough work first we'll move on to question 51 question 51 yes question 51 is up here right now the Venn diagram gives information on students who are studying home economics, mathematics, and arts. Home mathematics, arts. You see the Venn diagram here. Which of the following deductions can be made? All right. I could zoom out a bit. Which of the following deductions can be made? Some students who study arts study home economics. All right. The thing is, I've seen this question a bit earlier and there's a little issue with it but we'll come to that issue later on let's leave out one and come back to it for now two says no student who studied art studied maths which is true All right so clearly this is true some some home economics students study mathematics based on this inter in, in, this overlap here there's an intersection so this is true right now we see that two and three are definitely true now is one also true therefore is it CRD let's look at this this was question 51 and the answer here is saying that 51 is C so 51 is C the thing is why isn't it D or why did they say it's not D? No, when you say in everyday language, when you say some some students to, who study art also study homework, somebody might say, "No, you're right, you're wrong. It's all students who study art who study mathematics." No, if all students who study, I mean, study homework. Number one says some students who study art also that some students who study art study home ec. The diagram is saying all students who study art study home ec. And the person who put that as being not valid, right? They are thinking of the fact that when you say some but it's actually all that you're wrong however when you're dealing with logics and mathematics if all who study art study homework and then you say some who study art study homework you're not wrong right you're not incorrect if you said some who study art some but not all then the not all would make you incorrect but if you say some who study art study homework you're not wrong when you're dealing with logics right you wouldn't be wrong because if you point out all of them the fact is all of them do it if you say some do it you're not really wrong you're not wrong in logics if you say some but not all right the not all part would make you incorrect but part one some students who study art study homework logically that's not incorrect it is right so if the 
person was saying that it, if they were dealing with logics in mathematics, D would be the correct answer. But anyway, hope this is sorted out. There's some issue and confusion with whether one is valid. But in mathematical logics, one would be valid. So the answer would have been D. But anyway, let's look at 52. The radius of the circle is 7 centimeters. The difference in centimeter between the perimeter of the circle and the perimeter of the hexagon is... Let's look at this. What you have here, one, two, three, four, five, six sides, good. All six sides are equal. You can see that. The radius is seven. So from here to here is seven centimeters. And it applies in all cases, all right? Now, it would mean that this is also 7. But what about what's going on up here? Let's see. The entire circle contains 360 degrees. You can probably see that it's really 7 because 2 would be very small, 14 would be too large, and 20 much too large. So it would be 7B. But let's give, let's, here let's, Give it a chance to work out and see what really happens. If you have a total of 360 degrees in the circle and it's divided into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 parts, that means each angle in here would be 360 over 6, which is, in this case, 60. You see that? Now, if, if this is 60, degrees and this and this are the same then the angle here and the angle here must be the same all right 180 it, all of them add up to 180 so 60 plus this plus this call this x and this x 60 plus 2x would give you 180 so 2x is 180 minus 60 which is 120 so when you divide by 2 you see that x would be 60 so this is 60 and 60 so all angles are equal that means all sides are equal because it's an equilateral triangle so this would have to be 7 as well now the difference you're looking at the difference in perimeter. Oh, the difference in perimeter. It would probably be two, either two or seven. But let's let's not assume yet. I was thinking they wanted this line, but is a difference in perimeter that they want. So, what's the perimeter of the hexagon? It's 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7. 7 times 6, which is 42. What is the perimeter of the circle? It's the same as the circumference of the circle. It's pi. It's 2 pi r, which is 2 times use 22 over 7 times 7. When you cancel down, it's 2 times 22. 2 by 22 would be 44. So, 44 minus 42 would be 2. Right. So, it would be 2. Now, from earlier, if you calculate this as 7, it's, this is saying that what you're calculating here, the unknown side is 7. But that's not what they ask for. They ask for the difference in perimeter between the circle and hexagon. So likely it's not 7 that they're dealing with. 14 and 20 are way out. Here, 
the only answer would have been 2. So without coming right down to these calculations, the answer would have been 2. Alright? I had mentioned 7 earlier because I was thinking that, well, I forgot that they wanted the difference in perimeter. And thinking for a while that this is what they want. Alright? So, that's why once you have the time, work out the entire math. If the difference is if the difference between the two answers that you're looking at is not very clear. So continue working out the maths to get the exact answer. Alright. But we're going to break at this time and continue with question fifty three some other time.